Good morning. It's February 23rd, 2014. And I'm in the process of making small batches of biochar. I did quite a bit of review of videos and information over the past few days, and I was watching the different methods of producing biochar. And there are the T LUD uh, devices and kilns that people are building, and so forth and so on. And quite frankly, I just didn't want the expense and, and effort required to to just to try this. If it works, great, and if it doesn't, I, I just didn't want to invest too much. Now, this here is the third batch of biochar that I've made. And I'll, I'll show you the process here in just a minute. But this here looks pretty good. Uh, it's, it's nice and light and it, it breaks easily. What I'm using is a modified stainless steel container that I purchased from the Christmas tree store for $6. I removed the plastic lid, cut out a piece of scrap steel to replace this, and it just closes and locks and the steel plate which you'll see has a half inch hole uh, cut or drilled through the top of it and then this gets filled with wood scraps and then it gets put inside the wood fired boiler you want to pack this as full as you can you want to get the maximum amount out from each run I knew I saved all these scraps for something. I guess that's it for this time. So I pulled it up and shut it down like so. And then I'll put it in the gasification boiler. There's the half inch hole I bored through, like so. As you can imagine, it's quite hot in there. And there's a container loaded with the scraps. And I take it and I put it in there just like so. And I've got my stoker here. And you really don't need a whole lot of wood in here for this process. So there it's all set to go. Close the door up. Shut it, and you see it's just after 10 o'clock. Turn the temp up so it runs. Okay, we'll come back in 15 minutes, and we'll take a look. This is uh, what that container is being subjected to inside the gasifying boiler. And it doesn't take but 15 minutes before the contents of that container are set on fire and, and the gases are being consumed. All right, it's been uh, just about 15 minutes. And the next step is to put the boiler in standby. But I leave the draft inducer running. So we'll take a peek inside. Okay. I'll move some of this away and you can hopefully see underneath this container hopefully that's a little better you can see the flame just shooting right straight down out of the bottom of that container and that's burning off all the volatiles uh, within the wood what I do now is I just shut this up shut the bypass 
but I leave the stove or the boiler in standby and with a draft inducer running. What that's going to do is just keeps drawing the volatiles out of the firebox in that container and I'll leave that for a half an hour. And then I'll take that container out and let it cool and then we'll look at what's inside. Now the first time I did this, I left that inside the boiler for an hour. Way too much. I mean that whole container was cherry red. So I cut it way back to 15 minutes and that seems to work quite well. So again, I'll come back at 11 o'clock, we'll take that container out and let it cool and go from there. It's been about 10 minutes since uh, the last time we looked in here and you can still see flame coming from the bottom of that container. So there's still uh, volatiles in there that are being burned off. Alrighty, it's just about half an hour. And let's take a peek inside. And there's no more flame coming from the bottom of that container. So I would say it is soup. So let me get my tongs and we'll get that right. out of there. I've got my fireplace tongs here. And hopefully I can do this one handed. Oh. Extremely hot. I'm going to put this to cool inside that bucket. Now this container is still warm. I mean, I've got bare hands, but it is still warm. And I think what I'm going to do is find some way to seal that up, because I'm sure that's not doing me any good. There we go. And again, pretty nice looking stuff. Now the thing I like about this process, and I realize it's on a very small scale, but compared to the other units I've seen, the majority of the energy I'm using to produce the biochar is not simply going up a chimney into the atmosphere, it's being captured and stored in my uh, water tanks for heating my house and domestic hot water. So from that standpoint, I I'm pleased. And I, again, I realize it's going to take me a while to get the quantity that I want, but I can make at least, now this piece is kind of warm, <laughs> um, I can do this about four times a day w without much trouble. These pieces are quite warm. Um, so uh, to me, it's a efficiency-wise, it's it's better than just going outside and and dumping all the heat to the atmosphere. If you have any comments or suggestions, just leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.